Our next presenter is Dr. Erin uh, Oskoven from uh, Florida A&M and Florida State University. Uh, thank you very much for your introduction. Um, <clears throat> Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Eren armonos Given. I'm an assistant professor at the Florida a and University slash F, uh, Florida State University College of Engineering. And today uh, I'm here to basically uh, talk about our, uh, the ongoing research project. So I will have basically uh, multiple research works that we've been conducting, conducting as part of this project. And I will show like two or three slides from each uh, individual research work, uh, again, as part of the project. And bear with me, this is the first time I'm going to do something like this. So I, I hope, you know, I'll be as clear as possible uh, here. If not, please let me know. Uh, there are some figures and tables that you may be interested in later on. Uh, let me know and I can uh, basically uh, give you more information. Uh, this is, again, uh, a project uh, funded by our UTC, Universal Transportation Center, uh, Center for Accessibility and Safety for an Aging Population. Uh, I would like to acknowledge our uh, director here uh, for providing our, this opportunity, Dr. John Sabanja. This is a joint work, uh, a multidisciplinary, uh, multi-university work, uh, like many of the other research works here. Uh, me uh, from civil engineering, uh, Dr. Ardavan from industrial engineering, uh, Dr. Ramos is from civil engineering again. We have Ann Barrett from sociology, uh, and we have Tobias Sando from uh, University of North Florida civil engineering, and we have like uh, different uh, students from different backgrounds. Uh, Ibar Kojoteb and Mehmet Dulak, they are my PhD students. Uh, Hidayat Özel and Ashkan Omidvar, they have graduated. Hidayat is uh, civil engineering and Ashkan was in industrial engineering. Emmanuel Kidando is a civil engineering uh, PhD student as well, working under the supervision of Dr. Moses and he's here. Maybe some of you have seen his poster. Clayton Gumber and Rachel Douglas, they are graduate students at sociology. Uh, and Lina uh, and Angela are graduate students at University of North Florida. So uh, the motivation wise, I think uh, we are all motivated here about this uh, research, the, the transportation need, uh, the, the, the basically the need to study the, the, the transportation uh, related issues, problems uh, with uh, respect to aging populations. And Florida, as you see, is one of the places where we you know, experience this and we're gonna experience this even more uh, in, the late, uh, in the near future. So what we tried to do in this, or what, we, uh, what uh, our aim was is to, you know, utilize different data sets that we have uh, from different uh, departments and different offices. For example, uh, there was a discussion about the crash data here, uh, which, you know, uh, is related to transportation safety, traffic safety. We have uh, different data sets related to traffic speeds, flows, uh, number of vehicles. We have uh, socioeconomic data. We have population demographics data. Uh, we have uh, driver behavior, human behavior data. And what we wanted to have in this uh, pr uh, project is to basically try to come up with some uh, comprehensive, uh, you know, approach that covers transportation accessibility, reliability, and safety uh, using uh, especially geographical information systems, uh, GIS-based tools. So. Uh, we started with this uh, aging road user priority counties. I'm not sure if you're familiar with, with the Safe Mobility for Life Coalition of Florida. It's uh, an agency uh, composed of different, uh, like multiple uh, companies, agencies, and universities. And they came up with this map where you see top 10 urban priority counties and, and top 10 rural priority counties. Uh, the color basically shows you percent of population uh, over 65 by county and also uh, the urban and rural priority counties are selected based on the uh, high risk of crash, the highest crash risk, uh, basic crash rates uh, for this count uh, in the Florida. And we basically wanted to start with these counties and uh, basically follow to the other counties uh, in the remaining uh, uh, Florida. So 
I'm going to basically show you a couple of slides again from each uh, project, each research work that we are doing. I'm going to start with the crash analysis, safety analysis, which we're going to do for Leon County. So I'm going to show you a box over there just to let you know where I'm going to focus on. In different uh, research works that we're conducting, we're going to look at different parts of Florida. So for this one, I'm glad somebody has presented uh, the, you know, uh, information about the crash databases. So we do have the same kind of database in Florida too. Uh, for more than 10 years, we have all this data related to driver, uh, you know, weather, uh, traffic conditions, etc. So uh, we use this data to come up with you know, statistical analysis, like regression models. And also we use this data to come up with uh, GIS-based visual illustrations like this. Uh, this is uh, the Leon County, Florida, and uh, especially the Tallahassee area, if you're familiar with the region. And we see uh, this is kind of a heat map that you all know, probably, that can be uh, uh, you know, uh, obtained through the kernel density estimation. But here, instead of the planar KDE, where you use the Euclidean distances between points, we used uh, the actual roadway distances, so-called taxi cap distance between points, so that you basically see colors on the lines other than on a plane. So the blue colors, basically the dark blue colors show those areas where you have uh, higher crash risk compared to the other locations. And in this one map, we're going to be focused on 65 plus populations. And most of the work uh, we do is uh, we focus on 65 plus populations, but we also uh, kind of uh, we wanted to focus on the oldest old, young old, and also 50 plus populations uh, in our research. Also, uh, this, we came up with this kind of GS-based illustrations where you have, uh, in the 3D, you have the crash density, like high crash, high crash risk. The higher uh, you get the distribution, it means you have a higher crash risk. And in the 2D, we have kind of the population uh, factor, which we drive based on the uh, 65 po plus population that live around the region. So basically, we try to see uh, if there is a you know uh, relationship between these two. Obviously, you can say there is roadway design effects and other effects. Yes, but we just uh, try to you know visualize this to see if we have uh, any uh, uh, any information that we can use based on this research. So this is like a GIS based application, and then we focused on uh, districts two and districts three and the box here. And this is a Manuel Kidando's work, uh, if you have seen his poster. So we said, OK, we have the crash data here. We also, but we also have the congestion related, like uh, traffic related. Uh, uh, is it five minutes? I have five minutes only? OK. So I have to be faster, I guess. Uh, we have our reliability metrics that we introduced to our model. And we developed these tables where we see that uh, we, in the regression model, in addition to the crashes, uh, we see the effect of probability of congestion, buffer index, planning time index, and so on uh, in, on the uh, occurrence of uh, aging driver involved crashes. So I'm going to go faster here. We have transportation safety and predictive capability. So one thing you have with the crashes is you have the data. But you, want, you may sometimes want to also predict the uh, occurrences for the future. Like you have this 10 years of data, what will happen the next one year, OK? Can I predict the occurrence of crashes based on all this data, weather, traffic, et cetera? So we came up with this model for Miami and Jacksonville. Uh, and I'm not going to go over this again. Uh, there, is a met, uh, there is a method, uh, there is a way to do this with, through receiver operating curves, ROC curves, where you can basically uh, find uh, if your model fits, uh, it predicts the future crashes. Uh, uh, and then we developed a couple of models to you know, uh, increase the predict prediction power uh, when compared to the traditional regression models. We had, uh, in Miami County, we had speed reliability uh, research where we focused on two, uh, three uh, parallel roadways, I-95, Florida Turnpike, and US-1. And what we did is we focused on the Thanksgiving weekend, okay? And we tried to see the kind of, uh, on a time series analysis, we tried to see the, the change in the speed so that we can basically use this to, for our uh, aging population uh, involved research. Um, what we did is we tried to find the uh, lowest uh, speed regime uh, in, a, in a whole data set where you have like uh, the lower speed, like congestion. And we tried to find the speed difference between the lowest speed and the highest speed in our data. And we tried to come up with an explanation in terms of how this is related to congestion. 
I also have this accessibility analysis. I have presented this in a couple of conferences. Dr. Molnar knows it. In July's conference in Toronto, we had this. Uh, we basically looked at the accessibility of uh, multimodal airports, multimodal facilities like airports. And uh, from, you know, uh, basically you have the origins as population blocks and destinations at the facilities. And you basically calculate the travel time and distance in be between them to come up with an accessibility measure. And we weighed this over the uh, people, the 65 plus people live in that county, and we came up with this county-based accessibility maps. And then we had some emergency evacuation analysis for Bay County. We basically uh, used this uh, approach to find the travel time needed for 65 plus population and 65 plus population living independently uh, to uh, the closest shelters, closest uh, airports, etc. And we have seen that uh, the, when you introduce the congestion into the picture, uh, the time that it takes for you uh, for uh, certain people, certain uh, group of people to the airport, for example, increases uh, in the you know uh, amounts of like 10 to 15 minutes. We also had this uh, research uh, related to pet evacuation and older populations, and we focused on Miami metropolitan area. Uh, so people have pets, older people have pets, and uh, there are some pet-friendly shelters in, uh, that to serve them. So we have seen, based on the American Community Survey results, we basically had some regression analysis. Uh, and this revealed that uh, needing help with pet evacuation is a significant predict predictor of public shelter use. So respondents who need help evacuating their pets have uh, more odds of uh, using public shelter than those, of, uh, those who do not report uh, their need for evacuating their pets. So this is uh, our joint work with uh, sociology department. And then we had also the University of North Florida uh, research group, Dr. Sandoz group focusing on Lee County. Uh, they collected some data on uh, two locations uh, related to, you know, uh, people basically going into this freeway uh, through this ramp lane, and they collected this data for different, you know, you, know, you have different uh, people from different ages uh, when you collect this type of data, and try, they tried to analyze uh, through this methodology, they tried to analyze, for example, if there's a significant difference between the critical gap acceptance for uh, younger adults and uh, older adults. And uh, here, as you see, we have uh, some, uh, we see that older adults kind of be, uh, act like more risk averse. And this basically all uh, research we think can be used in terms of, uh, like uh, can be implemented, can be integrated with our other uh, research work. So with that, uh, I'm gonna stop, I'm good. So this is, the, again, the first time I've done this. Sorry if I uh, made it a little bit faster than usual. But I wanted to show you all the research works that we're trying to do as our project, as part of our project. And we also reach out to Florida Department of Transportation, Safe Mobility for Life Coalition, uh, city agencies, uh, transit agencies to you know, get their feedback. And uh, we want to have uh, this research to be somehow practically implemented at some point. So thank you very much. Uh, for your for listening to my presentation. <laughs> if you have any questions. Any questions for Dr. Oskovin? Yes. I have a question. So you you showed a slide with some information. Okay. Thanks. Uh, you showed a slide with information that appears on the Safe Mobility for Life website. Yes. The Golden Aging, and I'm I'm wondering. So how do you work? I know with the coalition to help use research findings to inform practice? So uh, one thing, for example, I did was uh, they have, uh, I think, uh, two or three meetings every year uh, with all these agencies, all these companies, all these university people. They basically attend that uh, conference. And I try to basically uh, present our research in those meetings so that I can get some feedback from them. Uh, I think. The GIS uh, application, for example, the, the transportation safety part, the crash analysis through GIS, I presented them uh, those uh, results to them and they were interested in it. Actually, they, uh, they were thinking of uh, applying a similar uh, methodology for bicycle uh, related crashes and pedestrian related crashes to see those high crash risk locations. Uh, the Safe Mobility for Life Coalition person at FDOT is uh, Gail Holly, which is, uh, you know, uh, one of my contacts. So he, she basically helps, you know, us to, re you know, present our research in these meetings. I try to reach as, you know, as much as possible 
to uh, th those guys. Uh, recently, you know, uh, I think uh, they've been interested in more of this stuff because in Miami or Orlando, I don't know, they have seen an uh, uh, increase in b pedestrian and bicycle related crashes. So it means there is, you know, uh, and, and, and we need more improvement. Yeah. Robert, did you have? Uh, I was wondering, did you also look at total crashes? So are, is there a difference between where yes. um, that and, is totally the, true. and the function for all crashes or crashes of that type and for the elderly? So we did that. I didn't present it here. We did that for different age groups, teenagers, 16 to 19 or 16 to 22, uh, including university uh, students as well. We focused on the working group usually like 22 to 50 and 50 plus to 64. So we looked at different age group drivers. Here, for example, we have seen that the 65 plus crashes kind of uh, appear more in the Northeast area, not like in the Southwest. And in the Southwest, we have the university. And we, if, when we look at the uh, 16, plus, 16 to 20 related crashes, for example, we see like a lot of crashes, high crashes in the Southwest area. And we developed actually a method to, to be able to compare them. So we developed a measure to successfully compare them. I wish I had it here. So we have maps, like comparison maps, where you have more crashes related to teenagers and more crashes related to age. What about, am I loud enough? Usually am. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, but what about, I'm particularly intrigued about the congestion relationship. Is a congestion relationship different for older drivers than it is for the rest of or other age groups? So, yeah. Uh, so it depends on, the, for example, uh, it depends on the location for sure. But Tallahassee is kind of more uh, a place where we have less congestion than other cities like Miami and Orlando. But we have seen some uh, in, at some locations, like for example, the northeast corner over there. There is a, a, a very complex intersection where we have ex we experience congestion, and we see that aging involved crashes, like 65 plus involved crashes, are kind of more have you know are more than the total population crashes over there. So that is something we look we wanted to look into. And we, what we wanted to do is to focus on metropolitan cities rather than the city of Tallahassee, which is kind of uh, less congested. So for that, we're, not, we're looking at Miami and Orlando and Tampa and other cities. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.